All right, cool. Morning, mate. How are you? Yeah, well, how are you? Very good, thank you. Considering a bit of a how's isolation treating you? Yeah, it's strange times. A uh, bit of bit of everything. Good to be around the kids more. Um, yep. But work's been pretty busy, so uh, yeah, I've been locking myself away in the office really. That's good. That's what good. About Any, you? Uh, yeah, not too bad. We um, got obviously the one in flurry away yesterday which was a, a good result so there are definitely still buyers uh lurking around there might not be as many but the ones that are looking are definitely uh serious which is good yeah you'd think so yeah, yeah. so i guess um obviously just touching base on what's sort of happening from a financial perspective um the last couple of weeks obviously there's been a lot happening around the world so can you just give us an update of sort of what's going on at the moment well yeah we've been well i've been super busy with um uh, getting clients better interest rates. We, we've got interest rates as low as 2.09% now. So that, that 2.09 is incredible levels. So uh, just been reaching out to a lot of the existing clients and then the new clients coming in. It's a great time to be to be getting a home loan. Um, the bank On the bank side of things and policy, there's been a couple of minor changes. Some of the banks have introduced some COVID related questions. Um, you know, if your particular job or industry is affected by COVID, um, how has that impacted your income or expected to impact your income? So we've had to deal with that a little bit, but um, you know, as long as, as long as it's logical and framed in the right um, manner and presented to the banks, which a broker, you know, should do, uh, hasn't been too bad so far. Yeah. I a lot of obviously we're hearing that banks obviously doing doing their part i guess in some sort of way you can see how it is but the with people putting their mortgage repayments on hold how does that sort of affect them obviously they're going to have to pay that interest in the in the long term is it are they paying interest on the interest or are they just paying the interest in one sum or is it spread out over the home loan how does it actually work uh and it does depend on it does differ with each lender but generally the interest that that does accrue let's just say it's for six months yeah, bad interest that they would have normally paid does get added onto the loan balance at yep. the end of that six month period, and then some banks change the repayments at the end of that six months um, for the remaining loan term, and your your monthly repayment will go off, go up to pay that interest off, uh, or some banks will add, you know, six months to your home loan. So if you had twenty five years left on your home loan, you'll have twenty five years and six months. So it really does differ between each bank how they're dealing with it. Yep. Um, I think they speak to your broker if anyone's in that position. I've had a lot of fun, con, a lot of conversations where speaking to my clients where if we can uh, hold off doing that uh, for a little period of time, I, I'd advise that. But um, yeah, each each case, it's a case by case thing, really. Yeah, yeah. Are the banks asking for more information these days, or is it pretty stock standard? Um, is it continuing on? Obviously, if you've got your job, you've got your job. Obviously, a lot of people have lost their job, but are they actually asking for anything more? Well, yeah, they they are. If if they think you're in a high risk industry or a, or a high risk role, so if you're in tourism, hospitality, um, you know those sorts of roles where COVID has really impacted those industries, yeah, they are asking for employment letters. They are asking for uh, uh, what you're going to do when you go back to work. Um, if you're self-employed too, there's big, um, there's there's a lot big, there's a lot more questions being asked on has how has it impacted your business, um, and when do you expect it to pick up? Just just things like that. So yeah, yeah. Is obviously you were talking about interest rates before. I guess some people have got fixed interest rates. If you are fixed and this is all happening, is it? There's no way you're getting out of it. Is that fixed? Or is that <laughs> Generally, no, yeah, you, you're not getting out of it, yeah, because the, the break cost is applicable to your current fixed rate. Um, I haven't heard of too many people being able to do it and then refix. Uh, yeah. I suppose ask, ask the question, you know, you, you, there's no harm in asking. Um, I had one the other day with Bank West where uh, he actually broke his fixed loan and paid the break cost um, yeah. because it made sense with him over a over a 12 month time frame to go on to the lower rate. So he was happy yep. to do that. We ran all the numbers and yep. he was still in front by doing so. Uh, but that's not applicable for every case. But again, it, I can't stress enough. I think we every time we nearly talk, um, 
speak, pick up the phone and speak to your broker. If you don't have one, engage a broker, give me a call um, and, and, you know, just go through all the scenarios before you make a decision. Yeah, I have noticed there's definitely like banks are as much as they're there to make money. They actually seem like they're definitely getting a little bit more personable. I've literally got a call from um, the bank manager of uh, Westpac yesterday just calling to see how I was doing. Like, yeah, I'm, right. I ever had a call from a bank saying, yeah. how are you doing? Is there anything we can do to help? And just a branch manager from um, the Karen at Westpac. So it was yeah. quite, uh, I was quite shocked. It was quite interesting, which is, it was, it was awesome and good, I guess, good service. But they're definitely sort of reaching out to, um, I guess there's a lot of good rates at the moment, a lot of good deals going around. So they're trying to, the touch points are more important than ever. Yeah, ex I agree with you wholeheartedly there. And, um, you know, they, if they, if they don't support people in these sort of times, um, it's a chance for them to win back a bit of loyalty, um, mm. you know, from people. So uh, the feedback I've had from the big banks or feedback from my, my clients about the banks has been pretty positive overall in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. I guess any people that are obviously in the market at the moment, so there are industries that are thriving right now and people's jobs are very much secure and they're making a lot of money, the medical industry, all things like that. So these people that are looking to buy is there anything they should be sort of doing obviously touching base with their broker um is there anything they should any banks to be i guess getting in touch with more than other ones or who's showing the best rate who's showing the best deals yeah so not not to be bank specific but they should be getting pre-approved up front um yeah. some banks are taking a lot longer than others to to deal with the changes that they've had to with covid so like some banks were um, their assessors were already working at home prior to this. So their systems are just haven't changed at all. Whereas yeah. some banks that had a, like a centralised processing unit um, to then shift all those people to work from home has caused massive delays. So their assessment timeframes have blown out to two or three weeks or four weeks. So you need to know that upfront before you go and put an offer in on a property because you need to allow for it on your finance clause. Yeah. Um, Whereas there's other banks, like Bank West is still at three dark business days. You know, their, their process hasn't changed at all. They're, they're still um, still churning them out, really. Um, yeah. So you need to know that up front. And, and that's why being pre-approved up front just takes away all the hassle of, um, you know, going through finance and the stress of the finance while you're under offer. Yeah, it's a bit of an interesting time. I don't know if you read that, um, that column on that, the chief... Um, economist from uh, REA wrote the other day in terms of he was speaking actually about sort of Australia and what he's sort of predicting and uh, in the Perth market he was actually I guess depending on when China gets back to business and iron ore is going to obviously skyrocket gold continues just to keep pushing up and up and Australia is about to become the largest exporter in gold and obviously Western Australia is a big uh, mm. with a, with a, the main the main factory house over here so it, it's going to be interesting over the next six or 12 a lot of people are predicting oh it's going to drop this or something but he's actually saying for perth usually when they zig over there we zag over here so yeah. half the time yeah melbourne are going up we bloody plummet but they're going to um i just don't think we're, we're not overpriced here so they they seem to be very much overpriced over there so it's going to be um yeah it's going to be interesting to see what yeah. actually unfolds yeah i agree with you yep Yes. All right. So finishing up, um, any sort of anything that we need to know? No, I just I, again, it's not always about interest rate. But while these interest rates are floating around, why wouldn't you look at your home loan? Uh, you've got time. People are sitting at home, maybe, you know, more than they would be. Not as busy, not as out as much. Um, just just get online and have a look. And if it doesn't you know, look like low twos or mid twos or under three, you should be speaking to someone about it. Uh, yeah. Give me a call. Absolutely. No problem. All right. Thanks All right. for the chat. We'll, uh, we'll touch base next week. Have a good day. See you ya. Too. See you, mate. Ciao. Bye.